time now for our rants and raves of the week. And I think we'll start with you, Dan. I have a rant for Rolling Stone magazine. Uh, this week, many months after the complete meltdown of their UVA campus rape story, which proved to be uh, false in almost all of its particulars, uh, managing editor Will Dana finally departed from the scene of the crime. And uh, again, they're not coming clean on any of this. It's just, well, you know, it's been 19 years. It was time to go. Maybe seek some other and opportunities. So seek some other opportunities. I'm sure he's going to be spending more time with his family. Uh, Rolling Stone has still not come to terms with this terrible piece of journalistic malfeasance that they're guilty of. Why, why did it take so long? For him to make an exit? Uh, you know, probably a decent interval, so it didn't look like he was being hustled out the door. Yeah, I smell lawyers uh, in the background. Yeah, yeah. but uh, you know, the on the other hand, there. that's what should have happened. Yeah. Well, she's a freelancer. Has she written anything since mm -hmm. since this they happened? Said she wasn't going they anywhere. said they will continue to use yeah. her, but I don't know if they have or not. All right, All right Kelly, you're All right. next. Yes, woman power. So positive. I have a rave. For Politico, which is saying a lot, um, because they hired. <laughs> All right, let's accentuate the positive here. <laughs> Lauren Kaczynski right. to uh, be the editor of the new <clears throat> Massachusetts Playbook. This is a feature of Politico. They have most people know it through Mike Allen, and they round up. Yeah, you know, the person who does the Politico Playbook rounds up interesting bits about politics, locals. Politicos, other things going on that are of interest. So, for example, the cut line for Mike Allen's piece is must read briefing on what's driving the day in Washington. For the Florida one, it's Mark Caputo's must read briefing on what's hot, crazy, or shady about politics. I'm loving to see what her cut line will be, but um, she's a perfect person. She's a hard worker. She's been a contributor on my show, Under the Radar, for two years. She's very smart, and boy, does she know Dorchester back and forth. And Bill Forey always has. The great insight to hire these the, uh, fabulous editor people and publisher of the, the Dorchester Reporter who gave her a platform and a space and guidance and um, all is good and I hope he finds another Lauren. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> and she uh, uh, knocked her Olympic coverage out of the ballpark, uh, did the first story about the Widette Circle That's merchants right. and how they hadn't really even been contacted by Boston 2024. And she's posing a serious challenge to our host here for <laughs> smartest Minnesotan in the local media. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> actually, in fairness, actually, we have a cabal. There, there's another one right here. <laughs> oh, so, that's right. Yeah. 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 Both Full of you guys better watch it. Of radical yes. transparency. Yeah. Yeah. This is full disclosure right now, yes. <laughs> just Timberwolves fans see. are taking over. I'm glad feeling not like I'm getting nicer just sitting here and I for, don't for like it. For what it's worth, I got to say that, that we had this crazy email exchange when it was clear someone was going to praise Lauren for going to Politico, uh, in which basically everyone wanted to do it, and yes. it was getting kind of nasty and heated. That's and right, yeah. and I fought successfully, Lauren, to, to say, I girl power, woman power. All right, yes. right on. <laughs> Justin, you're up next. Uh, my, uh, my rave this week is for... Uh, uh, CNN reporter Tanzina Vega, who yeah. started a conversation on Twitter about media diversity. Uh, this week there was the release of the annual census, the newsroom census, that looks at uh, what the job numbers are. Jobs are down again in the industry in newspapers. Uh, but they also look at uh, issues of minority hirings and, and where minorities are at in terms of editorships and other newsroom jobs. The number of, of minorities in uh, newspaper jobs has stayed relatively around like 12 to 13 percent for several years now. And it's just a situation that doesn't seem to be getting any better. And the fact that minorities are becoming such a bigger part of the population in the U.S., the question is, why don't the newsrooms really reflect the communities that they, re that they are reporting on? Just briefly before I go to John, is there any shift in, in new media? I mean, are the there is there is a little bit, and that's the interesting thing that the that the newsroom census numbers did find is that there is a little slightly better um, in terms of diversity hiring and, and diversity in newsrooms for online outlets. So there's some positivity there, but overall it was a really good product, uh, really good discussion because you saw a lot of journalists, and myself included, sort of um, being very heartfelt about their experience in newsrooms and what it's like to be a journalist of color. She's mm -hmm. another great journalist. Came from the Times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, John. Briefly, you get the last well, word. Well, my rave will be of special interest to. 
people who are dizzy from trying to keep track of all the legal issues surrounding Deflategate. I have a rave for a Houston-based attorney named Steph Stradley, who has a blog at stradleylaw.com, which currently features the most comprehensive and readable explanation of all okay. the legal issues. And the bottom line is it exonerates Tom Brady, and I love that. Uh, okay, that's where you were going. Go Pats. All right, that is going to do it for tonight's show. Tell us what you think. You can email us, tweet us, or leave us a comment on Facebook. We're always on at beatthepress.org.